Imagine that you've been trying to create ClassPass and Flutterflow, but yet you feel overwhelmed and you don't know where to get started. Well, look no further than the brand new template created by Flywheel Studio. We're going to break down the five steps that you need to consider when creating your own app using this template. And we're going to go through what this app looks like and how you can get started with your template right now. So here are the five steps that you need to consider when using a Flutterflow template. By the way, there's a link down below to check out the template and to look at this guide. So here it is. Number one, you need to think about what am I trying to do? Number two, what kind of screens do you need to have in your project? Number three, setting up folders. Four, setting up actions. And five, creating logic. So the first one is, what am I trying to do? This is important because if you're going to be looking at a template like this, you need to first understand, okay, what are the use cases? Am I trying to create a marketplace for local classes in my area? Is it going to be physical classes? Or are they going to be virtual? Why am I going to create it? What do I need? What kind of components do I need? What's the workflow? This is really important because when you're getting started using a template, there are so many pages. In fact, if we look at this, there are more than 20 pages that you can be using in this template. So it's really important to know what are you going to be using it for? How do you plan on using it? The next part would be looking at the screens and writing down what you need. So take notes on the flow. For example, if we go into this template, we drop down to pages. And then once we look at the different pages, we're going to scroll across. And then we can have this view where it says view all pages. This allows you to see all the pages from the setup all the way from booking the class. As you look through the different class, uh, the different pages for ClassPass, this kind of template, it's important to know what pages will you need. Will you need all of these pages or will you only need a few? Writing down your workflow and what you need will help you to feel better and less overwhelmed when you're using a template like this. Remember, not everyone is going to use every page. It depends on the app that you're trying to create. And it's really important to note that you need to figure out what screens you need right now. Not all of the screens you might need in five years. What does your application need right now? In the comment section down below, let me know what kind of app are you trying to create? If it's a class pass app, or you're trying to do it for your local community, a specific niche, let me know. Step three is setting up folders. Now, this is really important after you do all of the pages to think about the different pages you need for different activities. For example, for class booking, this one, we have different pages in different folders right here, including uh, authorization, so auth, onboarding, static pages, subscription. So they've already have some of the different um, folders set up for you. Is this all that you need? Do you want to add other folders for you, for your own personal use? What would you like to do? You can take a look and decide on what pages you're going to need and how you're going to organize it for your application. The next part is setting up actions. And this really has to do with looking at the design and looking at if the person is clicking or doing certain things on a page, what do you want to happen? This is important because remember, although you'll have a template, you'll have this already created for you. Once you have these buttons, you have to still decide what the buttons will do. So when they tap this button, what do you want it to do in the application? There might be certain buttons right now that has basic actions, and you can look at this by clicking on one of the buttons and then navigating to the action section over here, taking a look at it. But for your own, for your own application, you've got to think about, do you want it to react or do certain things in a specific way? That's really important. After you've identified in setting up actions, it's important to create the logic. So what does that look like? Well, there could be a couple different things. Number one, the logic could be connecting your, your backend. So deciding, are you going to use um, Superbase? Are you using Xano? Are you using Firebase? What are you going to be using? And then also, how is the application going to act with the logic throughout it? So it it's more than just clicking buttons. Will there be certain information that passes to one page or over the other? 
Will there be certain automations that you need to have happen? Are there API calls that you're going to do? Are two systems talking to each other? Those things are important. And it's important to progress through this list and not just do it haphazardly is you can feel really overwhelmed or you could set it up wrong or just get yourself confused by not having a a logical progression using a template and thinking through the process. In the comment section down below, let me know, are you planning to use this template or maybe one of the other ones that we have been reviewing? And there's going to be a link somewhere on this page where you can take a look at some of the other templates that we've been reviewing from Flywheel Studio or how to get started for a complete beginner for Flutterflow. I'll see you in the next video.